Yo, what's up guys? D Cell Gaming here, back with some more Final Gear. And today I'm gonna be going over the two new collab units, uh, Mari and Kaoru. I'm gonna go over their skill kits, break down what they do, my overall impressions on them and what I think about them to hopefully give you guys an informed decision on whether you should pull or save. So without further delay, let's get started. All right, guys, and before we get started, I do want to say these are just my opinions and my analysis on the matter. If you disagree with me or you find something that you think I missed, definitely let me know in the comments down below. I will be happy to discuss and go over that with you. Um, this is all about just looking at the units and trying to help people figure out whether they should summon for a unit or not. Also, do keep in mind that all of my reviews in Final Gear are based on custom mech activation. In Final Gear, I always encourage people to think of pilots and the mechs as one and the same. It's very important to start thinking them, thinking of them as one and the same because the pilots work very differently outside of their custom mech activation. So all my reviews, unless stated otherwise, are based off of custom mech activation. Let's go ahead and dive right into the reviews, starting with Mari. So Mari is a striker and she has the assault weapons and the heavy parts specialization. Um, so that means she's going to have an attack of 10% and a health boost of 10% when she has her specs um, equipped. So yeah, it, basically if you're equipping her custom mech, like stated before, she's going to have these. Looking at her SD models, I think her um, character model is really cute in game. I really, I really do like it. Unfortunately, her mech model is hideous. I think it's the worst one of the Evangelion uh, collabs. It's just not good. It's just, just not good in my opinion. But hey, you know, it is what it is. I do like the, um, I do like the character model though. It's pretty good. Starting with her high gear, Mari unleashes attacks to the targeted location, dealing 847% damage to all enemies within range. Also enters the Optimus state for 10 seconds, boosting both damage and crit chance by 10%. Does not stack, can only be refreshed. Now the custom mech activation will be, she attacks to the targeted location dealing 1,058% damage to all enemies within the range. Also gains five stacks of Optimus plus, each stack boosting damage by 2% until battle ends can be stacked up to 20 times. And once stacked 20 times, enters the indulge stage, which boosts her crit by 100%. So basically she auto crits after that point. Her next skill is going to boost damage by 15% and crit damage by 20%. Custom mech activation will boost damage by 20% and crit damage by 30%. Her third skill, when Mari's attack hits an enemy, there is a 25% chance of entering the Optimus state, triggers once every 10 seconds. The custom mech activation effect will, she gains a stack of Optimus plus every second. And lastly, her fourth skill, both Mari's damage and crit damage will be boosted by an additional 20% when in the Optimus state. Her custom mech activation is her damage and crit damage will be boosted by an additional 1% for every stack of Optimus Plus she has. When there are certain stacks of Optimus Plus, gains an additional effect until end of battle. She ignores 60% of defense when at 10 stacks, also ignores enemy shield, and at the same time, Mari's standard attack has a 30% chance of dealing 2x damage when at 20 stacks. So let's go ahead and break down her skill kit and just talk about what it means. So her skill one, the high gear, it's gonna deal like a mini AOE damage and the stacks up Optimus plus layers up to 20 times. Now with her talent, if you fully talent her out, that will actually go up to 30 times with the talent so she can get 10 extra layers on that. Now what this means for her is that at 20 stacks, she will have a maximum of 40% extra damage 60% extra damage with her talents and she gains a hundred percent crit chance at 20 stacks now we can see this character is designed to ramp up in damage so she's not going to start out super strong but she's going to ramp up in damage over time her skill two will just it's a straight overall dps increase by boosting her damage and her crit damage and the custom mech just makes those values higher so this is just an overall damage increase now her skill three is really when things start to change because with her custom mech she will start getting stacks of optimus every second which means 20 seconds in she will have 20 stacks 
And if she's fully talented out, that means 30 seconds and she'll have 30 stacks. So we can see this skill is ve very much designed to help her ramp up quicker. So it's designed to shorten her ramp up time. And remember, every stack of Optimus Plus while she has that custom uh, mech activated is going to be more damage and more crit damage. Just overall, that's what you want. You want stacks quicker. Now her skill four is interesting because each stack will now increase crit damage and damage by 1%, which means that will further increase her damage and crit damage by 20% and 30% respectively, depending on whether you have her talents um, you know, leveled up or not. And at 10 layers of the Optimus Plus, she will begin to ignore defense. She ignores 60% defense and at 20 stacks she will begin to ignore shields as well as the uh, defense ignoring and then her standard attacks have a 30 percent chance to do double damage so overall i think mari is an excellent striker unit she ramps up over time and she can really shorten the ramp up time very quickly and start to do a considerable amount of damage mari's biggest drawback in my opinion is she is a striker which means she is competing with other powerhouse units that we already have. So she's competing for a slot against Tasia, against Ren, against Blade. So there's already major powerhouse units in play as far as strikers go, and she's competing with them. And I don't think she's quite at that level. However, her DPS is pretty high, and it will be very high if you don't have any of those units. Like it probably will be one of the best strikers you have if you don't have those units. And the other thing to keep in mind with Mari is that she attacks very slow. It's only like a 1.16 attack per second. So yeah, all of the other li uh, units listed below are at like two seconds or higher. Rin and uh, Blade are both at like two seconds. So they, even though they feel slow, they attack twice as fast as her. And Tasia attacks like four times faster than her or three times faster than her or something like that. Her attack speed is crazy, obviously. But yeah, she's sharing a slot with those powerhouses. And I think that's really her only drawback. If they didn't exist, Mari would be a superb DPS option. Let's move on to Kaoru now. So Kaoru has artillery and medium parts, which means he's going to have a 10% boost to his crit chance and he's going to decrease damage by 10 percent i think both his character unit looks good although it's kind of dark to see sometimes and it's kind of it kind of blends in with some of the backgrounds and same with his custom mech it, it, it can be kind of hard to see i guess a little bit but uh, i think overall it probably has the best design uh, except for maybe shinji because you know it's so iconic the um you know it's just more it's probably the most iconic one but yeah it's it's pretty good his high gear, Kaoru attacks the enemy in front of him, dealing 853% damage, also boosts his damage by 10% for 10 seconds. Now the custom mech suit activation will be, he leaps into the air and hurls the spear of Cassius towards the enemy, dealing 1,367% damage, and then roots them for two seconds, which means it keeps them in place. Also enters the awakened state for 20 seconds. When awakened, Kaoru's skills change does not stack and can only be refreshed. His skill two, boost damage by 20% and crit chance by 15%. The custom mech activation will be unawakened, boost damage by 25% and crit chance by 20%. And once he's awakened, increases both damage and crit chance by 35% but also boosts his crit damage by 35%. His third skill, when Kaoru hits an enemy, there is a 30% chance of boosting crit damage by 20% for five seconds, and that can be stacked up to three times, which is a maximum of 72% crit damage. The custom mech activation will be, when Kaoru hits an enemy, there is a 50% chance of boosting crit damage by 24% for five seconds, can be stacked up to three times, so that's when he's unawakened. Now when he is awakened, his attacks straight up deal two times damage and there is a 35% chance of dealing four times the damage. Also, whenever his standard attacks hits an enemy, there is a 15% chance of increasing the duration of the awakened state. His fourth skill, when Kaoru's health is above 50%, boost crit damage by 50%. Now the custom mech is going to be the unawakened version when his health is above 50%, boost crit damage by 50%. But when he is awakened, that turns into when his health is above 70%, it will boost 
boost his crit damage by 50% and also when his health gets below 40% it will boost crit chance by 30% and his crit damage by 70%. All right, let's break down Kalru's skill kit. And honestly, I actually really like how Kalru works. I like how when he gets into Awaken, it changes his skills up a little bit. In my opinion, he's a really fun unit to play with. Skill one will root an enemy. So that will keep them in place. Also, this kind of reminds me of like uh, a Dragoon attack from Final Fantasy or something like that. He like jumps up into the air and just hurls down the spear. It's pretty awesome. And then he will enter Awaken for 20 seconds and that will change how his skills work. This is Kaoru's main source of damage because it's a way to keep him in the awakened state and then he will have ways later on to really help him stay in that awakened state. So his idea is you want to ramp him up into that awakened state as quickly as possible possible because that's when he's going to be doing the maximum amount of damage his skill two, while unawakened is going to be 25 percent damage and 20 percent crit chance and now when it's awakened it will do 35 percent to damage crit chance and crit damage this is an overall damage increase and we can already start to see how important it is for kalru to maintain that awakened status so not only are the numbers higher you get an extra amount of crit damage on top of the damage and on top of the crit chance his skill three unawakened hits give 50 percent chance to boost his crit damage up to a maximum of 72 percent when he is awakened attacks automatically do double damage and have a 35 percent chance of doing four times the amount of damage so quadruple damage there standard attacks also have a 15 percent chance of extending the duration so we can see the absolute crazy multipliers that he has with this skill set so two times damage instantly four times damage possibly and then he actually can extend the duration of that awakened state and possibly extend it until his next high gear so he can get that in waken state like indefinitely his skill four is a damage window so when his health is above 50 percent he gets 50 percent crit damage unawakened when he's awakened his health needs to be above 70 percent to get that 50 percent crit damage however once his health below falls below 40 percent it boosts his crit chance by 30 percent and then his crit damage by 70 percent so this is a window of DPS here. It ensures that even if he's being targeted by somebody, he will do increased damage. So he's gonna do increased damage whether he's at full health or whether he's at low health. He will have a small window where he's not gonna be doing as much damage, but uh, this skill here will ensure that most of the time he will be doing lots of damage. I think he's on par with like Tasia and Ren um as far for right now like his dps is crazy high even post nerf if that's what you want to call it he had this thing in uh the chinese server i believe his energy recharge was like crazy through the roof which made him broken he just instantly went into awakened state and started wrecking stuff and um that from what i understand i could be wrong about that let me know in the comments down below if i didn't quite get that right but from what i understand that's what the problem was his he was gaining energy much faster than intended it was a bug so once they fixed it he doesn't gain that crazy amount of energy recharge however even post nerve once he's in that awakened status he does crazy amounts of damage and his talents will help in extend the duration of his awakened status and then his skill three will help extend the duration as well so as long as he's attacking and he's talented it out he can pretty much stay in the awakened state indefinitely because he's going to be cranking out the high gears and he's going to be extending the duration and he's going to be just overall doing a crazy amount of damage he's um I would say for right now, he's an S tier unit. The one drawback of Kaoru is he is not future proof. Do keep that in mind about him. Units like Rin and units like Tasia, they're gonna get UR boosts and we're gonna get UR, like natural URs in the future. And those are much more future proof units. Kaoru is a fun unit. And for right now, his damage is really, really good, but he's gonna be power crept in the future. So he's not future proof. So my final thoughts on both of these characters are Mari. She's a very solid DPS striking unit with armor ignoring and shield ignoring abilities. Her main problem is there's no real reason to run her as a striker 
over any of the other powerhouse units that we have. I think she's a very strong, a very high DPS unit for now. A again, she's going to be power crep, just like all of the collab units will eventually. It'll just happen to all of them because they're not going to stay on par with the UR upgrades that we're going to get. It, but even for now, Mari's going to find it hard. You're going to find it hard to put her on your team one or team two because they're already going to be really solid striker units there. Kaoru, on the other hand, is a very high DPS unit. He's got high output damage. He can maintain his windows for very long, sometimes until the entire match is done. So he's very, very, very strong, even with the nerf that he got. His main drawback is that he is not future proof. He will be power crept. Keep that in mind, guys. He is not going to be future proof. He's eventually going to get power crept. So he while he's fun to use now and he can be a top DPS unit now, in the future, he's going to fall away. So my verdict for both of these units are I don't believe either, either of them are must pulls. In fact, they're probably skips. This whole collab, unfortunately, is probably a skip if you're free to play. Now, if you're a paying player, uh, yeah, Kaoru is definitely a pickup. That's who I would probably suggest getting. I think out of all four units, even with his so-called nerf, he is still the best unit to go for because his damage is just so high. The problem with this collab with being a free to play is that yes, you can get them and you can get their custom mechs, but getting their custom mechs, it's kind of sneaky what they did, right? They made the bits smaller, so you have to summon more to get their sequences and you have to summon more to get their custom mech. So you're gonna waste more crystals and it's gonna be much harder for you to get the sequences because you can't buy them from the soul, the soul shop. So it's gonna be harder to talent them up and make them strong. So you're gonna pour into a lot of effort into units that are gonna be power crept. So if you're free to play, I can't suggest getting any of these collab units because it's just the way they've done it is just not, it's not free to play friendly for the banner units. Now, if you're a whale or you're paying or whatever you wanna call it, uh, Kalaru is definitely a good pickup. He's very fun to play in manual. His manual play is really fun. I love his animations and just how he moves around the battlefield and everything. He just feels really satisfying uh, in manual and overall his damage is great. As always, waifu and husbando over everything else, over, over, over the meta or whatever. But do keep in mind the actual investment that you have to put into these collab units. But hey guys, that's just my opinions on things. Let me know in the comments down below what you agreed with. If you hated the video, if you liked the video, let me know in the comments down below. And if you made it this far in the video, consider liking and subscribing to the channel as for more future content like this, as that helps me out with the algorithm and it just helps the channel growth out overall. As always, guys, have a great day and I'll see you next time.